Amen. 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 You know, that, that reminded me, it took me back to when I was young um, uh, as a child and my mother used to, uh, uh, used to have morning worship and um, evening worship and that was one of the, the crucial songs and, um, you know, stand up, stand up for Jesus. <laughs> you know, speak to the, when you're a little child, stand up, stand up for Jesus. And, uh, and we were like, yeah, stand up. And we were like, yeah, I'm standing up for Jesus, Amen. you know. And um, it brings back a lot of memories. So even with my grandfather, so he's taking me back, really going right back. With my grandfather, my grandfather, he used to uh, play the guitar uh, um, and the accordion. He was self-taught, and um, you know, he was the the central figure in our, our home worship. And it was beautiful to see him playing the accordion and then you hear in the, you know, the, the breathiness of the accordion and he's just doing all of this and he's playing the keys uh, um, and then his guitar, you know, uh, it was just wonderful. Um, see all of that invoked by that meditation, stand up, stand up to Jesus. Uh, the sermon today is called Crossing Over. And uh, it's, a, it's a theme that each of us has to deal with. We have to deal with the idea of crossing over. And we, we have to deal with it on various levels in our life. And so that really the subject is, is, is crossing, crossing over. And what are you crossing over from? You know, uh, um, so it's the idea of crossing over from darkness to light from curses to blessing. Let us pray. Dear Lord, most kind and loving Father, go before us now, I pray. Lead us in the way that you would have us go. Take control of this word. These things I pray in the blessed name of Yeshua and Son, the one we call Jesus Christ, and we say, Amen. The scripture reading is taken from Exodus chapter 6. Verses 7 to 8. Exodus 6, verses 7 to 8, and I'm reading from the King James Version. And it says, And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. And I will give it to you for an heritage. I am the Lord. The Lord wants to give you an inheritance, a blessing. He wants to bring you out from a place of bondage, a place where you are burdened to a place where you can be free and unburdened. Joshua, I also want to take you through Joshua, and I want to take you to Joshua chapter 1, and verses 1 to 4. And so we'll be following Joshua as we go through uh, the rest of uh, this message. Joshua uh, uh, chapter 1, 1 to 4. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, of Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the river, 
the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast, shall be your coast. See, God, God is calling us to a place of blessing. He's calling us to a, an inheritance. He's calling us from a dark place. See, the children of Israel were in bondage and, and they had grown to become a, a, a great multitude of people, yet they were still servants in Egypt, kept in bondage, helping to build the empire as it were. And God had not forgot, forgotten his promise to them to release them, to bring them out from under bondage. I don't know if, if any of you here feel that you might be oppressed in some way. Maybe you feel like you're not living your best life. Mm -hmm. Maybe you feel like the children of Israel in Egypt. Why doesn't God remember me? Has he forgotten me? Has he forgotten his promise to me to deliver me, to give me a good experience, to give me a good life? Am I not his child? Then why am I going through all of this? Why am I experiencing what I'm experiencing? God says he wants to bring us out of this land of bondage to a land of freedom, a land that flows with milk and honey. God is calling his people to cross over, to cross over into a promised land experience. And that promised land experience talked about uh, blessings and not curses, but all the benefits of entering into a promised land where there would be an abundance of, of fruit and vegetables, of cattle, of milk, of butter, of oil, all these things that are essential to life. The things that we may go into the store and purchase and, and say, yeah, I need some olive oil today. So I'll go on. What if you know, we've experienced some of the crisis uh, between Russia and Ukraine and, and the lack of oil and, and the problems that the lack of oil is bringing into our own situation. Uh, prices for fuel is rising high. Uh, we, we can't, we, certain oil in the shops are, are running low. Uh, so the blessings that were promised in the promised land that is being disturbed, is being disturbed. And when that happens, it's because there is a curse of some kind that is on the land and even on the people. And so God was driving out the people in Canaan before the children of Israel, driving them out because they were idolaters. They did not believe in God. They did not follow God. They were under under a curse. They were under a curse. And so now he was driving them out. And he was bringing a people who were a blessed people, a holy people, a royal people, a loyal people, a people who would follow God, a people who would trust in God in order for them to experience the blessing. So the theme of crossing over can be seen uh, even in the experience of Moses. Uh, Moses and Joshua and the children of Israel. Moses, as a little child, was placed upon the river Nile. So he, he his mother, uh, had put faith in the fact that there was a promise a promise for a deliverer. And this promise also rested upon her child. And she put her trust in God that he would deliver Moses, even as a little baby, because the decree had gone out to destroy the young males, because there was concern about a deliverer that would deliver the children of Israel. So she places her son in a, in a, a basket, a little ark, and so Moses himself is delivered from certain death and to, to life. Pharaoh's daughter finds him and raises, raises him as her own son. And you know the story. And his mother is the one who uh, is employed to raise him as a witness. 
So Moses is placed upon the river and he, he is crossed over from one position to another. Moses then, as he grows up and he goes through his period of, of exile and um, his, his confrontation with God, his transition from a prince of Egypt to a deliverer of God, one who is humble, no longer proud, but humble and meek and lowly. And he's brought back to, to Egypt to deliver God's people. And we know all the miracles that were performed through, through Moses, the rod, with his brother Aaron. But now he, he gets the people to a, a point where they are now leaving. They're coming out with great wealth from, from Egypt. And here they are on the cusp of the Red Sea. And all the armies of Egypt coming after them. See, there's a point in our life where we have to make a choice to cross over. And there's risk involved in crossing over. Uh, when we go to study, there's a risk that we might fail, that we might not make it. But the dream is on the other side. What do you want to be? What do you want to achieve in life? You have to cross over. You have to go through an experience. All your fears and anxieties may prevent you, may cause you to stumble. Even those of you who have gained your qualifications and you're seeking a job, you still have to cross over. You still have to go through the trials of applications and interviews and all these things to try and gain employment. And then there is all that competition. You still have to cross over. You still have to cross over. Whatever situation you find yourself in, even when it comes down to relationships, there's a point where you have to cross over from singledom, you know, to a relationship, you know, and vice versa. It works both ways. There's always a point of crossing. And how you cross makes the difference. And where you are crossing from, a place of darkness to a place of light. God always wants us to cross from darkness to light. God, using Moses, led the people through the Red Sea. And as they went through the Red Sea, it says, the scripture says that uh, the cloud of the Lord, the, the Lord, the cloud of God's presence, was darkness to the Egyptians and light to God's people. And God's presence was in the cloud. And as God peered through the cloud, he saw the Egyptians and what they were doing to his people. And he troubled the Egyptians. He troubled the Egyptians. You know, so, so when his people got through on the other side now, he caused the waters to cover the Egyptians, to destroy those who were the oppressors of his people. See, I want you to understand that in your own life situation, God places his presence over you, the cloud of his presence. And we could see that um, with the apostles uh, uh, and the believers uh, in, in Acts 1, when they were in the upper room and they came together confessing their faults one to another, and the Holy Spirit came and lit upon them as tongues of fire. Now, this, this fire represented the pillar of cloud that we saw. We could see over the wilderness tabernacle, which was a, a, um, a cloud, a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. This was the same cloud of God's presence that, was, that went before the children of Israel, leading them all through their journey. And so there is this transition of the the presence of God through this cloud. And this cloud was the cloud that filled Solomon's temple. When Solomon uh, built the temple for God and the temple was dedicated by Solomon and that cloud filled the most holy place so that the priests could not enter. They had to come out. They had to come out. And again, this transition, Christ says, look, destroy this temple in three days. I will raise it up. 
speaking of himself as being the replacement for the temple. And now saying to his apostles, look, when I have to go, I have to leave, but I will not leave you comfortless. I will give you the presence of the Holy Spirit and he will reveal to you all things that are mine. And so now this same presence, which was in the most holy place, the presence of God, the Shekinah glory rests over the believers. I'm telling you all of this because I want you to understand that as you believe in God, as you follow after his son Christ, the cloud of his presence will rest over you. Mm. And he will peer through the cloud and see the troubles and see those who are coming against you in your life. And he will trouble them for you. He will trouble them because he wants to move you from a place of darkness to a place of light. He wants you to cross over. He wants you to trust in him and allow him to lead you in his life. They crossed over. And the scriptures say that the, the Israelites were all baptized under the cloud unto Moses. And this was a foreshadowing of baptism, baptism that we have as believers, where we are immersed in water, signifying the death of our old life, identifying with the death of Christ, and we are reborn as new creatures in Christ, crossing over from darkness into light. Moses leads the people across the wilderness and he's leading them to Mount Sinai in order to receive the Lord because God wants them to be a holy people, a royal people, a loyal people, a faithful people. So he leads them to that place where he can deliver the law, crossing over Joshua, then takes over from Moses. Moses no longer able to lead them. God has something else for him. His journey has ended here on earth. And he is taken really to the ultimate uh, promised land. He's taken to paradise. His body is taken rather. But Joshua now takes over from Moses. And they are at the cusp of the River Jordan, waiting to cross over, waiting to cross over, waiting to enter into their new promised land experience, the experience of a land flowing with milk and honey. But there is something that they have to do in order to enter into that experience. But when we look at Joshua, Joshua really is a type of Jesus Christ. He is a forerunner, one could say. Moses had sent uh, uh, Joshua, whose name was Hoshea, um, to go and spy out the land. So he and Caleb and some others went out to spy out the land that they were going to enter, that they were going to conquer, as it were. And Joshua and Caleb brought back a good report. This is taken from Numbers 13, verse 16. You can see that for yourself. That what God does here, uh, what rather what Moses does, is that he changes the name of Hoshea. Maybe he changes his name because he remembers his own failing, which, why, which is why he was not able to enter into the promised land. When he leads the people, he brings them to a place where uh, he's supposed to speak to the rock, the rock representing Christ. And then water would flow from the rock. But he's frustrated with the people, with their bickering and their, uh, um, you know, their, their haranguing and their hassling and uh, their complaining and their grumbling. Uh, he's leading them. He's trying to do the best he can. But it gets to him. And then he strikes the rock in frustration. And water still comes out. But the, the motif, the, the pattern is, is disturbed, is destroyed in a sense. Because now the glory is taken by Moses. 
and it's where it should have gone to Christ himself, the rock, the rock of our salvation. So in this instance, he, he, he changes the name of Hoshea, um, which means salvation, but he changes it to mean the Lord, our salvation. The Lord who delivers salvation. So he changed his name to from Hoshea to Yahoshu. And, and we know that name is referred to the name of Jesus Christ. So he becomes this type of Christ, leading his people to greater victory across the River Jordan. So Jesus Christ himself will lead his people into the kingdom of God. And so again, there is this constant theme of crossing over from one state to another state, from one position to another position. Christ leads us through the waters of baptism in order to arrive on the other side of the kingdom so that we can become believers, so that we can become represent representatives of Christ, so that we can, wherever we find ourselves, share the word of God, share the good news of Jesus Christ and his power to save. We can be his living epistles, his representatives, so that we can share the word of God, the same word that is living and powerful. So Christ leads us through the water of baptism and, and the blood of his cross into heaven itself. So he's helping us to cross over, as it were, uh, the river Styx. You know, uh, um, Greek mythology uh, at that time showed that the Greeks believed that the soul crossed over, had to cross over the river Styx. And you had to pay the, the god Cothon, uh, you know, a golden coin in order for you to cross over safely. And, and, and you know, and we see that um, John the Baptist himself was baptizing in, in, in the River Jordan, again, showing us not crossing over into the realms of death, but crossing over into the realms of life eternal. That's what Christ wants for each and every one of us to cross over from death to life. And the thing is, he shows us that we can still be alive, but dead. And, you know, you may have heard the term dead man walking. Uh, they often use that in prisons in, in America, those who were consigned to the death row, uh, that they were going to die, uh, whether, uh, well, but probably by lethal injection. Um, and they used to electrocute, but now lethal injection. And so those who were subject to death, dead man walking, when they're walking down the, the, the corridors in chains, they will say dead man walk. And Christ recognizes that those who do not align themselves with him are like dead men walking. Dead men walking. And he doesn't want us to be there. When we choose Christ, he gives us that eternal life, the spark of life. And the, you may question, well, is this real? You may question, like I did when I was a, a, a younger person, you know, in, in my youth, I, I questioned the reality. I'm, I'm here in church because my parents have brought me. I'm only following them, you know, I'm being loyal, I'm being obedient to my parents. But, you know, my mind is drifting on other things. I'm thinking about all the things that, yeah, yeah, I could be doing this, I could be doing that. You know, I'm in the house of God, but my mind is just floating here and there. And I'm not really listening to the preacher. Maybe a few words come through and say, oh, yeah, I heard that. You know, and then my, that would take my mind somewhere else. And, and, and I, you know, and here I am trying to decide, is this real? Is this true? Trying to decide for myself the reality of this. Is this merely an intellectual exercise 
or does it really have an impact on my life? Will it somehow change me? And these were the questions I had to ask myself. I, I, I was in this process of crossing over, making a decision for my life for the future. Should I be like my father and, and eat steak on Sabbath and watch football and cricket, you know, uh, and enjoy what the world has to offer? Or should I take on board what the preacher was saying about Jesus Christ and his death for you and me? Should I really take that on board? What impact does it have on me? I'm about to do my thing. I'm strong and healthy. I have a future ahead of me. I've got all the things that I want to do, do my hair, my clothes. I wasn't, doing, I wasn't thinking about no nails, you know, or shoes. You know, but I was I was thinking about all the things I'd like to do. And and the reality, the realness of God to change my life to affect my future was not necessarily in my head until I had an experience, I had an encounter. And, and I had to go to the West Indies to really have this encounter, you know, but this encounter can happen anywhere. It's about making a choice. And in the Bible, the Bible shows us that uh, um, Elisha, when he had died and was buried, he was a faithful servant to God, but there was life in his bones. And, and the proof of that was shown when a, a, a young man had died and, and he, his body was thrown onto the bones of Joshua, of, of Elisha, sorry, the bones of Elisha. And the young man sprang back to life because he had laid on the bones of Elisha where life was infused. And Christ says, though you die, though you are dead, yet shall you live because he infuses you mm. with life. So that when he calls you, when he comes in the second coming, your bones are going to respond to him. Because there is life in your bones. Whatever happens, even if you are dust, even if you have been cremated and your ashes have been sprinkled on the sea and sunk to the bottom, even if you have been sprinkled on the allotment soil to, to, to produce some good fruit, God is still going to, those elements are still going to respond to the name of when, when Jesus Christ calls you back to life. I mean, that would be amazing to see. All of these particles coming together. It's like, man, what happened? I was just asleep a moment ago, and here I am. Mm -hmm. and, there, and there is the Lord. I mean, that will be amazing. Amen. Crossing over. Crossing over. We have to make choices. We have to make decisions to cross over from darkness to light. Christ wants every believer to cross over. Wants every believer to trust in him, to claim his promises, to be transformed, to be uh, creatures transformed, bright and glorious, following him. You see, the central act of redemption in the New Testament is the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. The central act of redemption in the Old Testament is the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. Israel from being burdened to being free. And from us, from the chains of sin and death to eternal life, to be transformed, to be part of a heaven and earth made new, to be involved in the act of recreation of when God transforms everything, to be spectators with God when he transforms everything. Won't that be wonderful? I don't know if you want to, what, uh, 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 you know, a first row seat. You know, those first row tickets are expensive. You want to go to a football game, a baseball game, a basketball game, you know, to get a front row position. Even if you're going to be in a theater and watch a play, you know, you know, the price increases the closer you get. But salvation is free. You know what I mean? 
do you want to cross over? These were historical events, but they were not only historical. God speaks through history to give an example of our deliverance from the degrading bondage of sin. And Paul makes it clear in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 6. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lust. Those things will keep us in bondage. See, I want to suggest to you the idea that if we want to cross over to God's good land, we must take a leap of faith. We must trust in him. We must risk it all for the sake of what God is offering us. I don't know if you're hearing me or whether your mind is drifting off somewhere to the things that you want. Yeah, I like to do this. I like to do that. You know, but God wants to transform your life. He wants to bring you into that place of peace, of safety, of blessings and not curses. He wants to transform you. I'm gonna, I'm coming down to the end. But I want to take you through this other part of Joshua, verses five and six. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. The idea that God was with Joshua as he was with Moses is an amazing notion. It is the same kind of thing that God offers to each and every one of us. You see, when we are baptized into Christ, our life essentially ends. We are no longer our own, but we are purchased with the blood of Christ. That his life now is flowing through us. He exchanges our life because our own life is a life that is subject to death. And in order to free us to, to have eternal life, he must take on the sin that is ours and give the righteousness that is his. And with that righteousness comes eternal life. So there is this exchange. And now, because we become little Christ of the world, representations of Christ, just as Joshua was a forerunner, representation of Christ. The same promise that applies to Joshua applies to you and me. <laughs> applies to you and me. I will never leave you nor forsake you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. As God was with Joshua, he will be with each of us today. If we are willing to accept that. If we are willing to take upon that promise, if we are willing to claim it for ourselves. You know, when, when Elijah was going to be taken and all the, the prophets of God knew that, you know, Elijah's going up today. He's going up and they were whispering amongst themselves. And Elijah was like, yeah, 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 I know. Keep me. I'm a follower. And, and each time, Elijah was saying to Elisha, you know, you can stay here. You don't have to follow me. He says, it's okay, it's okay. You know, I don't mind, you know, it's okay. So he follows him all the way to the point where he's going to be taken. Is there anything that I can do for you? You know, this is the, the question that Elijah leaves with um, uh, Elisha. I said, yeah, yeah, you know. I mean, what would you do in that situation? I like a bed, I like a house, you know, I'd like some rings and things, you know, like some cash in the bank. And he said, no, no, I, I, I need a double portion of your spirit. I need a double portion. So hold, hold on, man. You want a double of what, what, what the Lord placed upon me? I don't know if I could do that. But if you, if you see how I leave, you know what I'm saying? If you see the way that I go and everything, then it will be unto you. And so... And so now, uh, um, Elijah 
is taken up by the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And so, and Elisha sees this thing, man. He sees it. And as he's, as Elijah's going up, his mantle, his cloak, as it were, falls down. And then Elisha picks it up. He takes off his old robes, man. I don't need these anymore. You know, I don't need these anymore. I have some new, I have this new one. And he takes it, he takes it, man. He takes the mantle of Elijah. And then, you know, it's like he puts it on and he checks it out. Yeah, man, it fits me just as good as the master. It, you know, it looks twice as good on me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then he gets to the River Jordan and then he takes the mantle off, oh, man. This is the thing that is so amazing. And it's like he just wraps it up. You know, if you, you know, if you get a towel and you, and you, you twist it up a bit and, and you flick it, you know, there's power in that thing, man. He rolls this thing up. And then he slaps it on the Jordan. And then he says, where now is the God of Elijah? And the water parts before him. I mean, he didn't need no priest to go through that. He didn't need the rod of Moses. He slapped that thing with the mantle. And the water's parted before him. I just want you to know that the power that God has made available to Moses, passed on to Joshua. Both of them representations of Christ. And you who are baptized into Christ, he has made the same promise to you, that he will be with you, that he will not forsake you. So whatever situation you find yourself in, whatever circumstance, we need to remember the promise that God has made to you. And he will honor that promise. He will part the waters for you. You need only need but ask. Don't get confused by the circumstances that, that you're in or the situation or, or allow fear and anxiety to overcome you. Remember God's promise and claim it in that situation so that you can cross over from darkness to light from curses to blessing, from failure to success. May God bless you as you walk in this walk towards the kingdom of God, seeking to help you cross over. I just wanna give you a quick reminder that God is calling his people to cross over into a promised land experience, covered by his blood, the blood of his son, Yahushua. So that where he will never fail or forsake you, where he will deliver us by his word, where he will prepare us to possess the land, where he will give us his eternal rest, and he will reward his faithful, obedient, and loyal people. I pray God bless you as you walk this way. These things I pray in his blessing, holy name. Amen. Amen.